I think it's very clear that the the interests of young people. Let me speak for Ghana. That I'm concrete about. There's a revival, a massive revival, in the interests of the writings and thoughts of somebody like Kwame Nkrumah, who was our, our nation's founder. He was a socialist. He was a pan-Africanist. He wrote a lot about the need for Africa to reunite, to become, the terms I've heard this week, a civilizational state, for Africa to assume its proper position in world affairs. It could not remain 54, 55, tiny little nations, each producing the same range of primary commodities and competing with each other. The unity was important that a reversal of power relations within our society was important. And that the only way to do this was through a socialist program. There's a huge revival of interest in that thinking because Nkrumah was successful in establishing the first sub-Saharan independent state. He was successful in transforming that economy. He did not make the full gains that he could have. In fact, if anything, in the initial period of his work, he tried to find a way to reconcile with the West, to get them to come alongside. But by 1960, he'd given up on that and was moving full steam ahead towards building a socialist state. And that's the point where our relations with China, for example, took off. You know, it, it's a fascinating read for those of you who can Prime Minister Zhu Enlai's first visit to Ghana in 1964 and the range of discussions they had about Pan-Africanism, about socialism in Africa, about the characteristics of what that socialism would be and so on, are, are really inspiring. And Nkrumah made predictions about what would happen if Africa failed to unite within its first decade of independence and how the Europeans, the, the West, would pick us all apart. And all those things have come to pass. All the predictions Nkrumah made about our failure to unite have all come to pass. They've all, he's been proved right on all of those things. And as a result of that, even though there was three decades of a suppression of socialism. There was even a period in which his works were banned, his books were burnt, and so on. After all of that, the current generation is beginning to read that stuff again. We run a bookshop in Accra, so we can see how demand for Grumma's works, particularly a book called Africa Unite, are picking up. So the trend was you had a small socialist community in the pre-independence area that tended to lead the struggles for national independence, but were surrounded by a broad nationalist community with all sorts of different interest groups who wanted independence for different purposes. Therefore, you had a weak socialist state once you became independent. And it was possible for forces of neocolonialism to overrun and overthrow those states or to weaken the commitments of leaders to the point where the socialism was really diluted. Then, of course, you had the period of the 80s and neoliberalism, Thatcher, Reagan, and so on. Now you have a revival taking place. So you have older people like ourselves who really see our task as nurturing that revival so that in the near future, you can have the kinds of leadership that China has had that has ensured a sustained development of society, a sustained coherence of society over many, many years through different phases of struggle in constructing a socialist and communist state. That consciousness is growing in Africa now, I think. I'm very hopeful about the next generation.